Hey YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Um, it took since the last video that was made, uh, I think it's, if you haven't been watch, following along, this this will be about video number six. So it goes from uh, when this truck still had the, the gas engine in it, and uh, no, the diesel engine, sorry, till today. Um, one of the not a complications, but one of the hangups was uh, mounting a air compressor onto this engine. Uh, General Motors does it all the time, and I've found um, a couple engines on the net that had had the air compressor on it. I needed the one, of course, on the right side or on the passenger side, and uh, one of them was available, but I couldn't make the parts guy understand at the wrecking yard. And of course, he's in a different country. Uh, the, there's no language barrier, it's just that he's far away. That uh, I needed the air compressor and the brackets that go with it, and uh, we got hung up on that, and that's about when he quit responding to my emails. So, in the end, what happened is uh, the air compressor that was originally in this truck, on the diesel engine, it's in here now, with a little bit of fabrication. And I'll just, uh, I'll just show it to you. Okay, there's the air compressor as it is now. Originally I wanted it on this mount. And this is the mount that uh, was on the, the diesel engine and it's, it's stood up perfectly vertical. And uh, the oil returned through there into the engine. There was ported oil from the engine to there into the body of the compressor. And uh, that would have been great. The only th thing is, uh, well, not one of the not the only thing, but to mount to put this mount on here somewhere and have that compressor where it was. I didn't, I couldn't tell if it was going to cause a conflict with something or not. And in the end, I'm glad uh, that it's this way. And uh, the air compressor could have been perfectly vertical, but even in here with that kind of mount. But uh, I would, as it is now, the belt is. Uh, about where it should be, I think. If it was, if this was vertical, uh, the compressor would have to come out more. Well, anyway, the the other the other thing was I only had uh, two feet of this plate here. I could have got more, but uh, where I'm at, uh, you either take what they got in the on the rack that they didn't use in the welding shop or you buy 24 feet of it so uh, that wasn't going to happen so that was six inch by three eighths mild steel and it just it's bolted to the front of the engine just like it was uh any other bracket the pulley <laughs> uh like this part of the pulley spins out and that's the only adjustment is uh how deep you got this belt in the groove right and that belt, as luck would have it, it, was just laying around here on another dead engine, so it worked out good. So, and uh, this being an industrial engine anyway, it has ported uh, oil to the timing cover. Well, let's call it, well, the timing cover, front of the engine, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the air compressor can take ported oil from uh, an external source. Whoever engineered these air compressors is pretty sharp. And all I got to do is hook up the airline. I wanted to run it and see if it uh, blew out oil, and it does. There's a light mist of oil. So uh, I'm going to have to put a alcohol sniffer on here just to trap the oil and maybe order another compressor, but I got a feeling I could order, 
you know, you could, you could get half dozen compressors and five of them won't be any better than this one. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's where we're at now. So I'm pretty happy seeing how most of what I use this vehicle for was an air compressor. It was really handy to drive up to a flat tire and just air it up or do some sandblasting or whatever. Uh, the rest of the time that I used this, it was either to move a trailer around the yard so I could mow the grass under it or uh, pull out a stuck vehicle. And these these things will pull quite a bit. Like they're, it'll pull a lot more than a, than a 100 horsepower two-wheel drive farm tractor will, as far as traction is concerned. So anyway, I'll leave that with you and thanks for watching and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. This video is number six, so there's five other videos in this series. Oh, and I'll mention this just in case uh, so one of you folks is in the process of doing this yourself or thinking about it. The center of this, of that pulley on the engine down there and the face of uh, the cylinder head so the other side of this plate is six and one eighth of an inch. That's the magic number, six and one eighth of an inch. Of course, the, uh, there's two pulleys there. Could have just as easily run off the inside one. Uh, I just thought it, I was uh, worried about moving the bracket too far back. I didn't want a conflict with my uh, spark plug. Let's see if I can show you the oil return line. Uh, I don't know if it's showing up there or not. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. And uh, the oil returns to where the mechanical fuel pump used to be. So that's just a, a steel plate, like a block off plate with a tap for a quarter inch uh, nipple. And then that hose is pushed on there. And that's where the oil returns if anybody was interested. Okay, thanks again, and uh, oh, hit the uh, like button if you don't mind. Bye-bye.